PSA. I know you be fucking disliking my motherfucking videos because it just always, it's not a coincidence that I see one motherfucking dislike on each of my fucking story times of you. Like, I know you be watching my shit. I know you got my notifications on. But guess what? I'm gonna still talk about you until I'm done talking about you. You're not dead until I say you're dead, my nigga. You can dislike. Go ahead and dislike. Go ahead and dislike right now. I'm sure you already did. You keep disliking. That ain't gonna make me stop these stories. from of course with Angel TV where we're talking about everything and when I mean everything I mean like girl y'all already know what time it is it's time for some story times okay and before I get into the video y'all know what to do hit the subscribe button below because y'all don't want to miss these videos y'all don't want to miss this video you don't want to miss the next video and the video after that and you probably low-key miss the videos before this one so I'm gonna need for you to catch up pause catch up and then come back over here because uh look we got some stuff to discuss okay honey it's a new year new stuff like unfortunately we still talking about this old ass nigga but we gonna get done soon eventually you know i still got some shit to talk about but once we get done bitch we gonna be done with him okay because ghost got a lot of stories he has a lot of stories bitch okay as you can see by the title we are going to discuss about how Ghost and I, well, me, because I was the lease holder, <laughs> got evicted again, okay, for the second time, and let's be real, the very last time. If you watch my last story time, I basically talked about how the cops raided our house twice, how he fucking fled from the goddamn cops on top of that, had to bail his dumb ass out of jail, which I should have kept him in jail, but because I was stupid and dumb, I can't say young and dumb, because the bitch still young, but I was dumb, however... <laughs> And, um, yeah, all of that stuff. If you didn't watch that video, like I said, pause the video real quick so you can take a look at that one and any other video that you didn't watch because everything comes together in order, honey. I'm telling all of these stories from the time we met to the time I kicked his ass to the curb finally and said enough is enough, okay? Bitch, did you subscribe? Let's go ahead and get into the video. And before I get into this goddamn video, let me take these glasses off because... Telling these stories, I can't have no motherfucking glasses on. Like, I, I can't do accessories on my face like that, telling these stories. Because it's going to make me want to throw these motherfuckers off my face, okay? Um, just thinking about the shit, the situation and all the shit that he put me through. So, yeah, by the way, I have my phone up real quick because I had wrote a little notes down. I have to write notes because, um, it's a lot. So, y'all, after the cops raided my apartment, y'all, I no longer felt comfortable anymore in the apartment complex because, like, he was running from the cops, number one. And then all these officers and firefighters were around my apartment the next day. And I, we stayed right in front of the park, like I said in my last video. So everybody was in our fucking business at this point, And I no longer felt comfortable. So what I did was I started looking for another place or whatever because I couldn't deal with staying there no more. Like, I can't live with not feeling comfortable to walk outside of my doorstep or to even simply walk to my car because I don't know what people talking or like I don't know because people been calling was calling the laws on me false ass assumptions I got a dead body in my house first it went from it smelled like a dead body to oh they cooking crack like my nigga which one is it crack and a dead body are two different smells and I don't know how a dead body or crack smells okay and we wasn't even in the apartment for a month y'all <laughs> not even a month and he had fucking punched the the door, uh, a hole in two of the doors, one of the uh, bathroom doors and the uh, this hallway, the guest bathroom, and also uh, my bedroom door. He punched a hole in because he just got anger problems, like I said, and the nigga was crazy. Plus, the place was roach infested anyway. Like I told y'all, like I don't know, they had a badass roach problem. And them apartments been there since 1973, I think, because I had googled them, did some research, and they've been there for years, like since. Before my mama was born, and I'm like, uh, did y'all, like, upgrade remodel or what? Because this is just a gross. I found a place, of course, you know, I did all the hunting myself. He didn't help me. He didn't do none of that. And, um, I got approved for the place. And it was really, really nice on the inside, y'all. Like, it was really, really nice. Even better from the apartment that we were in before 
the roach, the roach infested apartment. Once we got approved, I was like, we getting ready to move the fuck, like right now. So um, I believe we moved that towards the end of the month. However, I do well, like the middle in this so being that i knew we were getting ready to move i wasn't about to pay another month at that apartment like i'm about to fucking should go i ended up getting eviction notice of course uh <laughs> i already knew what it was like the first time a guy had came knocking on my door and i was like still paranoid like i, I already told y'all like i was paranoid as fuck to even answer my door for anyone if i wasn't expecting nobody nobody knew where the fuck i stayed besides the walls so <laughs> Um, one day a white guy just in, just in regular clothes had a like paper in his hand and he knocked on my door And I kind of figured it was to like serve the little eviction notice But bitch, I still wasn't about to answer that though Like I'm you either gonna have to put that shit in my door or put it in the mailbox because I'm not answering the door for nobody He ended up leaving and like a week later. He came back and knocked on the door Bitch, I ain't answering he actually um, stuck the little notice on the door and i don't even know if that's legal for them to do because it's like a legal court document they gotta actually serve you with that and you gotta sign for it or something like that but i ain't give down um they gave me the notice still ain't give down because i just like look we gotta move and again we were going through all of this because of ghosts i probably would have stayed in that little ratchet ass roach infested ass apartment for a little minute had this not happened between ghosts and i and stuff like that but because so much was going on and everybody was in our business like from the leasing managers to the fucking neighbors to the kids outside in the playground i was like no bitch you got to go it, it's it's time to go i ended up getting a u-haul pay for that bitch of course uh we didn't really have much but uh, how did we move this stuff last time Oh, we ended up, uh, like, an old friend of mine, actually, Gabe's friend, too. He had a truck, so he ended up, he helped us move the first time. But the second time, uh, I just went ahead and got a U-Haul. And luckily, Ghost convinced his brother to help us move. Now, mind y'all, this is the same brother who kicked his ass out and said, my nigga, you can't stay with me and my wife and kids no more. The same brother who he was living with whenever he first moved to Houston. The same brother who kicked his ass completely out of his shit okay um i assume they were on good terms at that point it was no beef or whatever because ghost was real mad like for a long time because he kicked him out but i'm like my nigga you can't get mad because at that point i kind of understood why he got kicked out like i never really knew the full story and i probably would never know the full story um uh, well i ain't gonna know the full story because bitch i don't care but um like i just knew that it had to be because of how he is and i have i already at that point witnessed how he was and how his attitude was so i kind of already knew why he like got kicked the fuck out on the curb like nigga come get your stuff i am done bitch did you subscribe so his brother helped us move or whatever they had the big stuff or whatever of course um and we got settled in um finally in our in my new place i keep saying ours bitch everything was mine mine bitch mine we got settled in in my shit you know and i honestly thought everything was gonna be okay like ghost had talked to me and he was like you know we're gonna start fresh and stuff like that and you know I, we're not gonna do all of that uh that arguing and stuff like we did before in the other apartment i just want us to to get back on track and to all it doesn't even fucking matter what he said. Just talking a bunch of bullshit. And you know me. I'm like, okay. Okay, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's great. That's great, baby. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. that. That sounds great. Girl, you dumb as hell. Living life. I actually just started working two brand new jobs from home, of course. Because the bitch don't work in nobody's office. Like, I would never work in nobody's office. Like, I'm sorry. That's just not my cup of tea. Two, not one, but two jobs from home. My... Um, primary job, my full-time job, was overnight. So I would work from 8 p.m. to 5 in the morning. And then I had a little part-time gig in the daytime. Well, no, that actually was full-time. No, I'm lying. It was part-time because it was 30 hours instead of 40 hours. Um, so I would get off at 5 o'clock in the morning, take a nap for an hour and a half, and then wake up to be at work for my, um, my day job at 8 o'clock in the morning excuse me at eight o'clock in the morning and i didn't get off until 2 30 i think 2 30 or 3 o'clock something like that so i was making money i was making bread at that point. i mean i was still was making bread even with my one job but with the both of the two new jobs combined you know a bitch was making money and you know 
Ghost was so fucking happy about that. He was so happy about that because he was so money hungry. And he always took my money. Y'all already know how he was. You know, he figured, you know, we together. So my money is your money and my money is my money. No, like, <laughs> I never seen a dime, like, out of his pocket. That's why his money was his money and my money was his money. Um, but yeah, y'all. I was working them jobs and I was tired. Like, I was really, really tired working hard. Still cooking, cleaning, dealing with his bullshit, still taking care of him and all of that while he worked this fucking part time job at Target. Like I told y'all in a couple of videos before, ten dollars and fifty cents cannot pay a bill. Like that, can, that can't pay my bills. It still can't pay my bills. So, you know, I still supported him in his dreams or whatever, cause that was the most that he made in his life. I'm not judging or anything like that. But my thing is, I'm gonna need for you. We, we together, right? So I'm gonna need for you to want a little bit more than just stocking groceries up on the shelf. Like you see where I'm at clearly in life. Like you saw where I was whenever you first met me. So that should have made this nigga want to fucking work in a motherfucking warehouse. Okay. To each his own. Ghost like to brag about stuff even though he ain't put a dime into the apartment, into the moving process. The only thing he did was help me move, which is the least he could fucking do. But um, once he got moved in and settled in, he was like FaceTiming his fucking friends and family members, showing them the place. Because it was really, really nice, like I said. And he was FaceTiming them like, yeah, y'all, whenever y'all come, uh, come out here, y'all can come over here. And, you know, y'all come stay over here by me and this and that. And I'm just listening to him like, my nigga, first of all, this is not your shit. Second of all, like, I talked a lot of shit in my head. Like, I was scared of him or whatever, so I talked a lot of shit in my head. I ain't much gonna lie to y'all. Um, but yeah, he was just, like, talking to everybody and stuff like that on FaceTime and just showing them around. And this one particular person he was talking to, I don't know who he was talking to, but it was obviously one of his friends or whatever, back from home. Whenever I say back from home, I mean New Orleans. Um... And he was like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm about to have a baby on the way soon, too. And me, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's trying to have a baby with me. Because we did have conversations about it in the past. Like, how he wanted a baby or whatever. But he just wanted to be, like, settled and stuff like that. And all that other bullshit. I don't know. But, um... <laughs> I'm just disgusted even thinking about this. Like, I even considered the fact. I'm disgusted with myself. I just feel like I'm going to throw up. Anyways... Um, so yeah, he was like, yeah, I'm about to have a baby on the way soon, and like I said, I thought he was talking about us, and then he just didn't get a chance to, like, actually tell me. I don't know what it was, but he said that. Come to find out, he was not talking about me, bitch. The gag. Let me put my glasses on real quick for this. He was not talking about me. However, it's gonna be another story time coming up soon. Don't worry, honey, it's coming. It's coming. I mean, it all makes sense now. But back then, it didn't make sense at the time, because I really thought he was talking about me. Like, I mean, I'm his girlfriend. Like, we're in a committed relationship, right? So he's talking about me. Hell no, nah, he wasn't talking about me. Another time, um, right after we not so long ago moved in, he was acting really, really weird. Um, like he was standing, uh, sitting on the ottoman or whatever, and he was like texting really, really fast, like really, really long. So I obviously knew that he was texting somebody, like long ass paragraphs and stuff. And like I said, he seemed like something was bothering him. I think I even asked him if he was okay or if he was good, but he didn't. He didn't tell me anything or he was just like, I'm good or something like that. But I knew he was fucking lying. I knew he was texting somebody. I just didn't know who. I became so afraid of him at that point that I didn't even want to, like, ask him who he was talking to or anything like that. So, next thing I know, like, a few minutes later, he walks the fuck outside and walks downstairs and starts talking on the phone all loud. Once again, doing the same stuff that he did at the last apartment, y'all. The same loud, obnoxious shit at the last apartment that he did in the new apartment. And my God, these apartments were like basically white. Like, we ain't seen no niggas hanging outside. We ain't seen no trash outside. We ain't had no roaches. We ain't had none of that. These were some white ass apartments. So, like, he was doing all that nigga ass shit outside the fucking apartment. And I over, like, he was so loud that I heard him. And I don't know if he knew that I heard him or not. But he was saying, uh, he was screaming to the top of his lungs. He was like, if you gonna send it, then send it. I'll believe it whenever you send me the information. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is he talking about? And then it all came to my head, to my mind. Bitch, somebody is sending him or trying to send him some money, but playing with him. Y'all know in my previous story times, I talked about how his mama will always money grant him or Western Union him 
or Walmart to Walmart him some motherfucking money because he was always broke or always spending his money on weed. And then by the time it came down to his responsibilities as far as going to that $30 a week ass class, he didn't have the motherfucking money. This nigga is trying to get some money from somebody and he mad at them because apparently they don't, they don't want to send him the reference number. From the information that I heard from him, I gathered that and and basically pieced it together that he was talking to somebody. I didn't know who he was talking to. I found out who he was talking to after, um, probably like a few weeks after, which I have receipts for. But you know, this is another story time, of course. I should've knew something was up because he never walked outside the house to fucking talk on the phone, like never. So I knew he was talking to somebody he had no business talking to, but again, I was so pussy. I was so scared of him at the time. I didn't want to ask him who he was talking to or why he was saying what he was saying because I was so fucking afraid. Weeks later, I found out exactly who it was and it wasn't his mama. But we gonna get into that whenever we get into that story because it's coming up very, very soon, okay? That's basically the story. Um, it's a little quick story that I did because we are now getting ready to get into the real shit, y'all. A total of six, bitch. The fuck is you putting up, bitch? Did you subscribe? <laughs> a total of six story times left. Uh, to tell y'all, um, how many story times have I done so far? I don't, I don't know. I think probably like 10 or 11 story times I've done so far. Um, not including this one that I'm doing. So, so I hope y'all ready for these next story times that I'm about to, uh, throw out. Like I said, we got six more. We got six more to do. Six more to do. And it's gonna get juicy. And when I, these next story times, I got receipts. Like, I, I know I had receipts back then, but bitch, I got screenshots and text messages. Okay? And it ain't with me in it. A bitch gonna see y'all next time. Like, the fuck? <laughs> At 17 weeks, my baby is the size of a turnip. If you don't know what a turnip look like, I'm gonna put it right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, my baby is the size of a turnip. Basically, they're just saying that, um, Baby should weigh about five ounces at this point, um, and the baby is about five inches long from head to.